family matters to God. Truly family matters. It's very precious in the sight of God because he is the one who ordained it. He is the one who planned it. In Genesis 2.18, the Lord said, it is, good, it is not good for man to be alone. Even though Adam was in communion with God, he, he, God felt that Adam was not complete in himself. He created a helper for him so that Adam and Eve can be together. So marriage was wedding and family. All these were began by God and God himself. So we find that it was God who created this family and made it the functional unit of every society and, uh, and therefore for every nation. He actually made this family, began this family and blessed them. He said, be fruitful and multiply. So we find that God's family, God created this family so that there can be companionship. In Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12 from the Bible, we read that two are better than one because they have a good return for their work. If one falls down, his friend can help him. Also, if two be down together, they will keep warm. So it means that God created the family for companionship. When one falls, the other can lift him up. It's not only for a physical fall, even supposing we are in a family and if there is any sickness, one can take care of the other. When two are together, there is companionship. Spiritually, when one falls down, when one in the family falls into sin, the other can pray over the, uh, this person, can counsel him, can uh, love him, show love to him and take him out of this pit of sin. God will surely help them when they try together. When someone falls financially, that is there is no financial uh, balance. So the other can, one can help the other build up the financial status. Mentally, when we find that one has fallen down, one is feeling lonely, one is feeling depressed, then the other can surely help this person to, be, uh, to share, to show love and to be a friend, a companion. So this, for this companionship, God created our families. So it is important to know that God himself created it. God created it for companionship. And when he called them, he said, be fruitful. So it is not enough if we just exist for not just for existence. God did not create the family. He created the family so that we can be fruitful with the talents, with the potential that God has placed inside us. We can become more and more fruitful. We can use our potential and bring uh, fruit in our lifetime through our, uh, through our work, through our mission, through our services that we do through our hobbies through whatever we do we can find that there can be fruits when he created plants he said let the plants bring forth seeds in themselves so that they can multiply but when God created the family he said let the you multiply, you be fruitful and you multiply. So the, uh, the prerogative was on the family. The beginning point was on the family. So this multiplication uh, should begin with the family. That's what we find in the life of Adam and Eve. This multiplication, why God said it should be in the family is because God created us according to his own image. In his own image, we are created. So because he is triune God, he wanted that fellowship to be reflected in a family fellowship. When families begin to multiply, it was the, the or command was given to the father and the mother to take care of the children, to show the love of God to the children. 
it was receiving god's love and showing it to the people to train the children according to the word of god to discipline them to train them to teach them the word to teach them and train them in godly principles to live a purposeful life as god intended so this to have a relationship with god the main main thing that god wanted was always to have relationship with him so to have to lead the children to have a relationship with god so that the society will be as god had planned but whenever god plans something for us the devil is always behind us to destroy it the devil tried to destroy it through the fall of man after the fall of man there was so much problem in the lives of mankind that god said you will have to sweat you will have to sweat for everything so now in this society satan is trying to bring in separation in the family he is trying to destroy what the blessing of god and now we have separation in the family live in relationships premarital relationships so many other things that are not uh, recorded in the bible so he has dismantled god's prescribed intention and foundation satan i'll repeat it satan has dismantled god's prescribed intention and foundation of the family so this has now led to such a big chaos this has now led to destruction in our society it is through the family that the children are nurtured to become leaders and contributors of the society they are created and motivated by the family so the family is the backbone of every society the story of a nation depends on the society the story of the society depends on the families which are involved in the society so we find that god's plan was marred by the devil but god still reigns god still reigns he will fulfill surely god will fulfill his purpose in our lives we find in the book of nehemiah and ezra when uh, nehemiah came to rebuild the wall when he heard the message that the people who were in jerusalem are under distress and the walls are completely down he were, he cried to the lord he prayed to him he fasted and his he received a vision from god actually we find that he built the wall in just 52 days he built the wall in 52 days because he motivated the families to build each part of the wall when each part of the wall was built by the different families responsible for it in 52 days he could complete the whole wall of jerusalem the same thing is true with families also if each family can build its own self can build the own family it if each family thinks how precious the family is before god and for the society and for the nation and if they try to build their own families we will surely see that the society is renewed the society is rebuilt we usually we think that nehemiah was building the wall and that was his vision but i think that was not his vision it was a means to an end when we read through the book of nehemiah every chapter we read through the motivation that he gave the people how he encouraged them he says fight for your families in chapter 4 we find that he says fight for your families actually they were building a wall and there were enemies outside the wall trying to uh, 
distract them, trying to stop them from building the wall. But Nehemiah says to the people, he says, fight for your brothers, fight for your sisters, fight for your children, fight for your families. So it is, it is our responsibility, I think, to fight for our families because families are precious in the sight of God. Families are precious to us, to the society and thereby to the whole nation. I was telling you about the vision of Nehemiah. Actually, the vision of Nehemiah was to rebuild the lives of the people so that families in the Hebrew culture could be re rebuilt. And building of the wall was just a means to the end. It was not the end in itself. We find in the other chapters of Nehemiah how the law was read, how the people made a covenant after hearing the word of God, how they rejoiced, how they cried, their emotions, everything was there. At the same time, they were able to rebuild, set right their families. So we find that God, it was God's idea to produce this, begin everything with the family so that the society can be blessed, so that children can be brought up in the word of God, in the light of the word. So, devil tried to stop it. Devil is still trying to do the same thing. He's trying to bring chaos, but it is our responsibility to realize that families are precious. Families are precious to God, families are precious to us, families are precious to the society and so let us fight for our own families. It's time we take up the sword, the word of God to fight for our families. May God bless you all. Praise is the greatest weapon with which we can fight our battles. We have Rachel who is a great worshipper. Let us join with her and worship our Lord. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take his yoke upon you. It's easy and his burden is light. He loves you.
it is to worship our God. He is mighty and he is wonderful. Now we have with us great guests, Pastor John and Pastor Chandra, who have been serving the Lord for the past 30 years and who have been married for the past 44 years. They have great treasures to share with us. Now we'll have Pastor John sharing with us. Then later we'll have Sister Chandra giving us practical tips on how to build our homes. Now over to Pastor John and Pastor Danny. God. God is light, is light. and him, him there is no there darkness, is darkness at all. At all, at all. Darkness flees at the mention of his name, Jesus. You have been pastoring the church for 30 years and uh, I heard many of your church members uh, told that you are a great model. So what are the uh, challenges the people have faced and what counsel did you give them? And thanks for the question you are asking. But before that let me just give some introduction. It's 52 years since I have committed my life to the Lord Jesus. 44 years since I got married to my precious wife. And 36 years I'm in the ministry and uh, 32 years in as a pastor. 36 years I'm in the ministry but 32 years as a pastor. For the marriage to be, before we talk about challenge and all those things, for a marriage to be successful and peaceful, we need to have uh, the both husband and wife must have God in their life. Both should be loving the Lord Jesus. Both should have committed their life to the Lord. Both should remain true to Him. So that is where when they are true to God, their relationship and the love between them horizontally will be so wonderful. So when you say challenge and um, other things, in life uh, you have financial challenges, you have uh, physical ailments, then um, in-laws problem, all those things are there. That's general. Everybody face it. But uh, more uh, important thing in marriage is the internal, the way we think and the way we brought up, the way we uh, live with one another, the way we think. So that is what very, very important. Number one is, we are, we are brought up in a different uh, lifestyle, a different family background. So there is something called ego in everybody. Yeah. Everybody has ego. And that should be dealt with properly. And that is why I say God should be must in the family. The ego, we, we need to, Bible says we need to honor one another in Christ. So the husband must honor wife and the wife must honor husband. So it's my way of uh, telling people when they face challenge. You love your wife, tell her every day I love you, every day. Thank you for marrying me. That's the way they should say, thank you for marrying me. So both the compliment exchange should be there. That's ego problem should be taken care of. The number two is suspicion. You know, every girl, as long as when, when they are in love, there's no problem. But when they become husband and wife, they immediately get uh, suspicious when a husband is talking, delayed or so taking something else and they get suspicious, oh, he's doing something else. So how to deal with those things is, first of all, there should be a trust in one another. She is mine and he is mine. She is mine, he is mine. That kind of a trust should be there. Mm -hmm. And then both should have a kind of an open conversation for anything and everything. They need to talk about everything to thrash out the difference of opinion. And um, also, they have to pray together. That's very important. Many times we miss this. You know, husband is busy, wife also employed, she's also busy with the children, all those things are busy. So we have no time to pray with, together. We must make it a point, both husband and wife, with the children, we should pray. Yeah. That's the thing. And then, after uh, finishing that, there should be a reading of Bible together. Then, more than everything, 
together going to church, seeking up to God, getting his counsel is very, very important in life. So there are many things involved, this ego and this suspicion. If you take care of, things will be wonderful. Things will be wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. Thank you for sharing your valuable ideas and uh, counseling. Definitely the viewers will be blessed by uh, the thoughts which uh, Pastor shared and uh, you will put it into practice. Definitely God will bless you when you obey all this verse. May God bless you. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. He who made the stars knows you by name. We have with us Sister Chandra. Welcome. Uh, she's been married for the past uh, uh, 40 years. She's had a successful marriage. So will you please uh, share some of the tips for our viewers? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> As uh, Solomon, the wisest man in the world, he said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And uh, also he said, the woman who fears will be greatly praised. praised. So, in the family relationship, we need to have, both husband and wife, we need to have fear of the yes. Lord. When we fear the Lord, when we know that we are accountable to God, whatever we do will be easy and uh, will be pleasing to the people around us and to each other. It will be easy also to have some adjustments in family life. So, we must have the fear of the Lord. That is the first tip I want to say. The second one is, uh, again Solomon said, um, the wise woman builds a house, home. And what Jesus on his sermon on the mountain said, the, anyone who follows my words or my listen and follow the word, he is wise. So, it is like a person who built the house on the rock. rock. So, the wisdom is from God's word. When we know the word, when we read the word, when we follow the word, we will have wisdom. When, when we have that wisdom, we can build our house. Whatever happens, Rain may come, storm may come, whatever happens, we are like a strong uh, building, it will not be crashed. So, do these two important tips I want to share with our viewers. First, fear of the Lord and the second one is, have God's word as your guide that gives you the wisdom. Thank you. We heard uh, say that fear of the Lord so the first thing that we need to have is the fear of the Lord. This gives us wisdom and also it leads us to the word which provides wisdom for us. The Proverbs also says that house is built by wisdom and by knowledge and it is filled with all treasures through knowledge. Prudence, wisdom and knowledge help a woman build her house. Um, at the same time, uh, uh, Chandra said that we should read the word, meditate on the word, apply the word and obey God's word in our lives. So when we apply the word of God, it will be easy for us to submit ourselves to God first and then to our family. So when there is an argument, when there is bitterness rising, we will follow the word and say, Lord, forgive me. We will be willing to ask for forgiveness. We will be willing to forgive others also. So and it uh, helps us. And one more thing is, uh, if any problem comes in the relationship, it's uh, always better to take it to the Lord. Yes. Pray. Instead of arguing or trying to advise, it's always better to take it to the Lord in prayer 
and God will change the situation. Yeah, it is always yeah. good to pray yeah. instead of uh, talking to the other person, instead of trying to change the other person. One thing we can be sure is that we cannot change anyone. Only God can change people. Yeah. So it is important, yes. as she pointed out, that we take everything to God in prayer because he's like a friend to us. We sing the song, what a friend we have in Jesus. We take all our prayer requests to God and God changes the hearts of the people. Yeah. God is in control of every situation that we are going through and in no time can he change the heart of the people and also the circumstances that we are going through. So the main thing is that we should fear the Lord viewers. Again we are saying fear the Lord, take everything to God in prayer and also base, live based on the word of God. Shall we all pray together for us to build great homes? Yeah. Chandra, shall we pray in yes. oneness for yes. the families that yeah. are going through and struggling? Yeah. Yes. Oh Lord, Thank you, Jesus. we come into your presence in the name yes, of Lord. Jesus. Amen. Lord, I bind all the spirits, all the satanic forces that yes, are trying Lord. to destroy the families in, in our Jesus community, name. in yes, our Lord. in our country, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray that whoever is uh, uh, taking part in this program, yes, Lord, who is watching Lord. this program, yes, may be healed in their families, Amen. Lord, yes, that Lord. they may become one with you, that yes, they may Lord. know that you are in control of everything. Lord, Amen. I speak prosperity into the families, Amen. healing into yes. the families, uh, yes, wealth Lord. in the families, Amen. peace in the families yes, and Lord. joy in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, yes, I pray Lord. that you will bless each of mm. these families that yes. are struggling. Lord, help them to take their burden to you, Father, yes, that Lord. you you will hold your hands, Lord, yes, when they are Lord. going through Amen. difficult paths. Lord, yes, Lord, according to the footprints that we have heard, we know that you carry us yes, through Lord. in our Amen. troubles. Yeah. Lord, I pray that today there, yes, will be, there will be deliverance in the name yeah, of amen. Jesus. Amen. And whatever they are going through, they will be able to overcome yes, in, the, in name the name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Lord, amen. we submit our prayer yes, into Lord. your hands. We submit all amen. these families amen. into your, your precious hands. 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 You are the one who created yes, them. Amen. You are the one who called them. Amen. You are the one who yes, joins Lord. them. You are the one who is going to guide and help them. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this time of prayer in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed our program. Thank you for joining us. It would have been very useful to you. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube and Facebook on Canal 10. Thank you.